Welcome to the gym. You've decided to embark on a journey of gains and we're here to welcome you and help you through it. The gym, a place that often seems complicated, a lot of conflicting information out there, but trust me, by the end of this video, you will know everything that you need to know in order to make solid muscle gains. Making gains is not easy because it requires you to put in work consistently, but it can be relatively simple. How do I know? I am a real doctor at the end of the day. Also, I have personally went through my own transformation. This is what I looked like before joining the gym. And look at me now. Look at me now. Let's uh, start shooting this way. Uh, the light is bad there. And look at me now. Making gains for dummies. Literally the only video you need to watch, at least as a starting point, to learn everything and a bit more that you need to make muscle gains, to get jacked, to get yoked, and to look like you lift. So you can finally unlock the next level of life, AKA body dysmorphia. Joking aside, let's get into it. In this video, we're going to cover training and nutrition and everything that is important for you to make gains. Let's start with training. First and foremost, you need to be doing enough training volume. You need to be doing enough weekly sets per muscle group so that you can see meaningful gains. Now we know that even as little as one to three sets per muscle group per week, so let's say one to three sets of bicep curls per week for our biceps is enough to see really solid gains. But why not spend the extra few minutes to add a few more sets and get a bit more out of our training if we have the time and the recovery resources to do so. As a starting point, being somewhere in the ballpark of six to 12 sets per muscle group per week without counting indirect sets. So, so for example, looking at biceps again, we're not gonna count any of our back work for our biceps and we're just going to count direct bicep isolation work. That set range, that weekly set range will be more than enough for you to make amazing gains. Progressing from week to week or from month to month and progression in general is something that people make a huge sort of deal and complicate things quite a bit when in reality things are pretty simple. As long as you are in the volume range that we just talked about as a starting point, you can obviously add more volume as you get more advanced and be closer to 20 sets per muscle group per week. But as long as you're doing six to 12 sets per muscle group per week, make sure that you're doing your best to beat your previous gym performance here and there. Add a bit more weight on an exercise, do an extra rep, do um, an extra couple of reps, and eventually do that extra set. Just go in the gym with your mindset being, okay, I have to do something more than last time. Keep in mind, some weeks you won't necessarily achieve that, and those weeks are not wasted weeks, but the idea of progression is important, and you need to be somewhat challenging yourself continuously to make meaningful gains. Pick a couple of exercises that you really like and keep those in your rotation for some time. Those exercises can be machines, free weights, or a combination of both, with the latter probably being your best bet. But if for any reason you absolutely love doing just machines or just free weights, it's likely that you're gonna be just fine as, as far as growth is concerned. We just mentioned six to 12 sets per muscle group per week, which you can spread as you like. Now, ideally, you want to make sure that those sets are sets where you can actually zone in, feel the muscle working and feel like they're productive versus trying to stack them all in one single session. Here are some ways that you can structure your split so that it makes a bit more sense. You could do upper, lower, upper, lower, and have either a three day break or have a day break in between or start your week earlier. By upper, I mean upper body exercises, and then lower body exercises, and then taking a day off doing upper and lower. Again, you could do push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, where you do all your pushing exercises on one day, then you have another day for all your pulling exercises, and then your legs, and then you start that over again. Uh, you could literally have one leg day or one push day, depending on your priorities, or you, know, you may actually like to do all your weekly volume in just one session. That may be manageable for you, and people have done so many times in the past. Which leads me to, you could also do a body part split, the classic bro split, where you do day one, chest, day two, back, day three, shoulders and triceps, 
and so on and so forth. Now, you could also have full body days where you do different exercises for different muscle groups and you sort of hit almost everything in your body with a different focus every time and you do two or three or four full body sessions per week depending on time availability and your own preference. Don't overthink this. Hit six to 12 sets per muscle group per week, two exercises per muscle group, spread them out throughout the week however you see fit and the rest will follow. Overall frequency, whether you hit your biceps twice or once or three times per week, does not seem to play a very crucial role as far as muscle growth is concerned. So again, see what works best for your schedule and just make sure you get your weekly sets in. That's the number one priority here. As far as rep ranges go, you could literally be anywhere in the five to 30 rep range, but for practicality's sake, try to be somewhere in the five to 15 uh, rep range because it may make things a bit more easy for you to handle versus selecting super light loads and doing reps on reps on reps and not really uh, knowing whether you're actually close to failure or you're just feeling the discomfort of your muscles. And although potentially not absolutely necessary to take everything to failure, having a few sets here and there that you actually take to that point will one, ensure that you're getting the most uh, bang for your buck as far as muscle growth stimulus goes, but also it will allow you to calibrate your ability to detect how close to failure you really are. So the next time you can actually know almost for sure that you are indeed leaving one or two reps in the tank versus three to four, because that may play a role as far as hypertrophy adaptations go. Consistency is king. Whether you miss that one workout or whether you have the one week here and there where you only manage to do one or two sessions is not a huge deal. Just make sure that you're consistently getting some training in. Even if that is literally one session where you do one set for each muscle group um, and then you call it a day. Obviously, if you want really solid gains, it is important that you do your best to get your weekly volume in every week. But keep in mind, you'd rather do one or two sets for a whole week versus zero sets and then feel like you're falling off the wagon and then end up having a few months off the gym because you missed that one session and felt bad. As far as deloads go, and deloads are essentially easy weeks of training or periods where you take it easy so you let fatigue dissipate, no need to overthink those at all. When you've been training consistently for some time and you feel extremely fatigued, extremely tired, and you see that performance is regressing, maybe your sleep is affected, take a week off or take a week of very easy training. No need to overthink it. No need to um, have a specific amount of sets in mind. Just do less than you usually do. Make sure your sets are easy and make sure that you're leaving the gym feeling refreshed. Do that for a week or a few days until you feel better. Get back on the grind, push, 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 push. And the next time you feel like that again, take your foot off the gas but make sure that overall you're not getting to that point too quick because you may be overdoing it. So make sure that you are training consistently for at least six weeks before you have to even consider having that uh, week off lighter training or a week off. Making gains and making easy peasy gains is not just training. You obviously have to focus on nutrition. Nutrition is even simpler than training and it comes down to the following. Eat mostly whole foods, so do your best to not eat a ton of highly processed foods. Eat around 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Even if you miss protein feedings here and there, it's not a big deal. Just do your best to eat plenty of protein. 1.5 to 2 grams per kilo of body weight will cover you. But keep in mind, training is the main, main driver here for muscle growth. Make sure you're eating plenty of fiber. 30 to 40 grams are solid. Fiber is important for health. And by aiming for 30 to 40 grams of fiber, you will naturally have to include more whole foods in your diet, which is solid. As far as your body composition goes, make sure, in my opinion, and based on the current scientific evidence, to keep your waist half of your height in centimeters um, so that you can ensure that visceral fat is relatively low and that you are fine from a health standpoint. And from that point onwards, depending on how you feel about your body composition, you can decide whether you want to maintain your weight, bulk or cut. By maintaining your weight, you can still make meaningful muscle gains, although they will be slower than if you decided to bulk. If you decide to bulk, eating five to 10% above your maintenance calories it's more than enough of a surplus to allow you to make solid muscle gains. You don't need to go on a YOLO bulk and get fat. Just eat five to 10% more than your traditional maintenance calories and you'll be fine. If you want to cut, eat less. And depending on how much body fat you want to lose and how fast you want to lose body fat, 
you can adjust your uh, calorie deficit accordingly. Going too crazy and losing weight too fast will increase your risk of losing muscle mass. So keep things relatively moderate while still lifting weights, obviously, and eating plenty of protein. To calculate your maintenance calories, simply Google uh, total daily energy expenditure calculator. We'll include a uh, link in the description for a really cool calculator. That will give you a rough estimate, but, and I know it's a pain in the and we all had to do it but once you do it for a few months you are equipped with solid skills for life weigh yourself daily and track your food for a couple of months at least so you can understand where your maintenance calories lie and to also get a better idea of how many calories certain foods have that will then equip you with the ability to guesstimate calories moving forward, and you won't necessarily need to actually track calories on your phone or on a device or whatever. When you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, as long as you're still training, even if you overeat or undereat, it's likely that nothing too crazy will happen, and a couple of days here and there are not enough to really affect your long-term progress. Last but not least, make sure you're doing some form of aerobic training for your general health that could be you walking for 300 to 600 minutes uh, per week which would allow you to actually maximize the risk reduction uh, for all-cause mortality or doing 150 to 300 minutes of vigorous physical activity running cycling whatever you enjoy or a combination of both make sure you are physically active and you're hitting either 8 to 12,000 steps per day or doing some form of higher intensity, uh, higher intensity cardio a few times per week, just because making gains is heavily reliant on you being alive and actually being there to make gains. If we could make gains then, I guess we would die and make gains. I don't know how that would work. We would have to also be zombies, but hey ho, random tangent, I'm losing it. Please subscribe, like, hit the notification icon. Oh, all of a sudden we're at the outro and I'm saying goodbye. Yep, this is how I do it. See you next time. I appreciate you. Peace.